Done. Here we are. We have audio. So this is the Hall Effect probe. Um, and here's the concept behind how it works, is that you've got a long, thin conductor like this, right? And it's the conductor is shaped like a sheet of metal, like a piece of tin foil kind of a thing, right? It's shaped like this. And we place it in an unknown magnetic field, right? So let's suppose the magnetic field is out of the page here because it's so much easier to draw out of the page, okay? And let's suppose that the current is flowing this way, that this side's the positive, that this side's the negative, right? So we just, all we do is we send a current across this thing, yeah? Okay? And if you think about it, a positive charge moving this way, if a positive charge were to move that way, what's going to happen? Well, it's moving this way, yes, to the right, okay? The force is going to be which way on it? down the page, and so this thing is actually going to drift uh, down the page, and the bottom of this is going to be positive, and the top will be negative, and all we have to do is take a voltmeter, and all voltmeters are blue, right, and hook one side to here, and the other side to here, and we'll read that. We'll read this side as being the positive side, this side as the negative side. The stronger the magnetic field, the stronger that voltage difference is, and we can measure it. Now, it's kind of a cool thing, because if the magnetic field were the other way, what would happen to the Hall effect voltage? Wouldn't it flip the other way? If we flip the magnetic field so it's, that it's into the page, now the positive charge is pushed up the, the board, right? So Hall effect probes are not only do they give you uh, how big the magnetic field is, they give you the direction, at least relative to that plane that you put it in, right? Yeah? What if we take this probe, though, and we screw up and we put it this way with the magnetic field. Is anything going to happen at all? No. no, nothing happens really. Because we're only, now we're measuring it this way and current doesn't move in or out of the board. It moves up or down and we can't measure that, right? So Hall effect probes are very, very sensitive to rotation. If you rotate them, you will change totally the reading on them. So when you use them, you've got to clamp them in place. The slightest rotation changes them, right? Okay. Now, does positive charge really go that way? We say it does for convenience, but it, it, po protons don't really move, right? They're, they being in the nucleus, and we would require, I don't know, a nuclear explosion for this to happen, right? In a nuclear weapons test, you might have positive charge moving around, right? Okay, so what really happens is that electrons go this way, don't they? That's interesting. Do you suppose it has a different result? Well, it does. Go through, let's go through this again, okay? Let's go negative charge going this way, right? Magnetic field out of the page. Everybody get your hands out. Velocity, it's this way, right? So if the current is flowing this way, if the current flows this way, we've got to understand this, right? Okay, then really what's happening is negative charge goes this way, yes? Middle finger's out of the page. Which way is the negative charge forced? Up, but it's negative up, correct? Yeah, so then this charge is actually forced to the bottom Okay, which, may, by the way, makes the bottom negatively charged and the top, by subtraction, positively charged. Now, do you see that this is a different result? Yeah. Did you see that this is a way to tell whether positive charges or negative charges move? Do you see that? In fact, I believe some of the earliest evidence that the physicists got it wrong. We had a 50-50 chance, right? There was positive charge and there was negative charge. We guessed that positive charges moved and negative charges stayed put. Well, we're wrong. Okay, so when you take electronics classes from the Navy, they teach everything with like negative charge moving because that's what really goes on, which is totally going to screw you up when you then get your physics major because you're going to be like, and you'll argue a lot and then your professor will say just eventually just be quiet. Yeah. No, I mean, not that that happened to me personally, you know. No, I did. I took these like uh, ham radio classes from, they were like Navy, using Navy stuff, right? And it's like, why do they do that? You know, because it really doesn't matter. Deeply doesn't matter unless you are actually designing super and then you're so smart that, you know, you know the, the big picture. So anyway, here is a Hall effect probe right here. There's the reading on there. Let me just show you how you can use this thing, right? And I'm, I'm going to propose some variables. As you look at this thing, it's inside a nice little uh, hard acrylic tube, I believe it's acrylic, it might be Lexan, right? Okay, uh, to protect it. But when you look at it, that flat little wafer-like chip is the flat surface of the Hall Effect probe. 
So this thing, that flat surface, the, the magnetic field must be impinging on it. Think of it as like a solar panel. If the sun shines on the edge of your solar panel, not so good. It has to shine on the flat face of it, right? So then we think of this, mag this North Pole, right? It's got the magnetic field lines coming out of its nose and curling around to the back. Well, watch the magnetic field. It's like, ooh, look at that, right? It's negative that way. What if I come the other way? And it's just not working, is it? Okay. That's interesting. Not doing a thing. It was doing something. I wonder if I have to set it up again. I know. No, it doesn't matter. Okay, but maybe it does. Let's just try it. Erase and continue. Stop. There we go. Let's just see if I can get it to... Uh, That's so weird. Why was it working and why is it now not working? Maybe it's a flaky uh, sensor. Maybe I gotta choose magnetic field again. Let me, let me just get a different sensor. I've got a, a bunch of these guys. <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they can sit on for a while and then they, they stop working or something. I don't know. I'll solve this mystery. Okay. How about this guy? This guy looks like he's promising. Maybe they just stop working after some period of time. Okay, so just watch. This could be your variable. So for your magnetic, keep it really, really simple. For your magnetic field lab, all you need to do is design an investigation and make a graph of it, okay? Now, if you get a graph where you can do like the high-low error bar thing, like you get a linear graph, that'd be just wonderful, but don't worry about that, right? Couldn't this be a variable? Distance from the pole of a magnet versus magnetic field? You suppose that could be your, your whole lab? Indeed, take a lot of readings, like, you know, 10 readings and et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, then the other thing you might notice is that if we if we just hit collect and let it run, uh, just can we race and continue? There we go. Notice that it varies. It's got a little fluctuation on there. Yeah. Okay. I don't know exactly why that is, but I think it's because there's lots of electronic equipment in the room and, and uh, things cause fluctuations like that. So what you can do is you can grab this stuff and uh, you can actually get it, go in there and go uh, analyze statistics. Right? And it'll take it and average it for you, find the min and the max. Max minus min divided by two would be your uncertainty, so, so it's a beautiful thing, right? So when you do this, you could just always look at, say, five seconds worth and just select it, and there you have it, right? Okay? So um, anyway, there you have it. You could also do, if you wanted to, if you could figure out a way to rotate this magnet around here, right? Maybe use a protractor or something. You, that could be your variable. Couldn't the angle be the variable? You could do distance away from, right? Um, we also have uh, electric coils, right? So you could take a, a solenoid, uh, like, 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 <laughs> where it is, here it is, right? You could take a solenoid like this and just, couldn't you put the, the probe right there and then change the current in the solenoid? This, by the way, we think is a linear relationship. We think that it's directly proportional to the current, double the current, double the, right? Okay, so you could put the Hall Effect probe right here so it sees the field lines coming out of there, right? Keep everything stationary and then just crank the current up and change the current. That could be your lab, couldn't it? Right? You could also do this. You could pretend that this coil here is a, just a wire, right? And we also think this is linear, that as you go, if you double your distance from this wire, that you actually cut the, the, the uh, magnetic field by half. So that would be a linear one. You could do max and min slope. You could do both design and data collection and processing on that, right? Okay. If you didn't, if you don't think you did it perfectly on the last time, so you could do that. Um, I've had kids do force, like they'll take a magnet, a fixed magnet, and put it on a triple beam balance. This is a very clever design, right? And then they they um, they take a electromagnet and they make it repel that magnet and push it down, and then they just balance the balance. Right? I thought this was very clever. And then you can, of course, 
if it thinks it weighs 200 